So we're still reading from the book of Tobit, which we will be until the end of this week, until Saturday. And it's a beautiful story. I remember speaking to a number of Catholic girls there a couple of months back, and they were talking about readings that they would love for their wedding mass. And they all went so Disney and gooey talking about this particular reading, how beautiful it would be. You know what I mean? Um, I take this lady as my sister and so on and so forth. Uh, It just sounds so beautiful when uh, Tobias expresses this prayer. I find the context of that particular prayer very, very important. So, Tobias uh, is speaking to Ragwell, who, uh, who is Sarah's father, okay? And so Tobias asks for her hand, basically. And Ragwell is, is very honest about the circumstances, the, the fate of the previous seven men uh, who, to whom she had been married. Uh, he's very honest with the fact that they, they all died on the night of the wedding. So, I mean, I, I mean, if I were to ask any of you ladies, you know what I mean, I have this a brother of mine, he's really, he's great, he's a great guy, he's wonderful, he's hardworking and he's, he's fantastic, he's wonderful, uh, he's, he's, he's still single because his last seven wives died on the night of their wedding because he has a demon in him. Uh, anybody interested? No? <laughs> like, you can kind of see why uh, Tobias should have had some sort of trepidation. Uh, but then Ragwell goes on, and I think his prayer, his prayer is very, very heartfelt. He says, so, okay, you want to take my daughter? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give her to you. The Lord of heaven favor you tonight, my child. Okay, and grant you his grace and his peace. He's practically saying, eternal rest grant unto your poor soul, Tobias, and may perpetual light shine upon you. Best of luck. <laughs> I hope this goes well. Um, and then, yes, so they, they, the, 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 the marriage contract is, is drawn up and uh, they, they come together, Sarah, Sarah and, and Tobias. And be, then the night of their wedding, Tobias prays this beautiful prayer. You are blessed, O God of our fathers. Blessed too is your name forever and ever. Let the heavens bless you with all things you have made. Bless you forevermore. It was you who created Adam, created Eve, his wife, to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race was born. So he's, uh, Tobias is going the whole way back to the, the story of creation, the origin of the human species and how God has created for created everything and provided for every need. It was you also who said that it is not good that man should be alone, so let us make him a helpmate like himself. This is the nice bit. I do not take my sister for any lustful motive. I do it in singleness of heart. Be kind enough to have pity on her and on me and bring us to old age together. After that, they said, Amen, Amen, and lay down for the night. And Tobias didn't sleep a wink. (laughs) Eyes wide open, just hoping he would see the morning. I do not take my sister for any lustful motive. There's something wonderfully pure about that expression. Now, obviously, I mean, we have to clarify this. This whole reading, by the way, is full of, or the whole book, is full of the use of uh, son, daughter, brother, and sister that aren't blood relations, just so, just so we're clear there. Because I mean, someone did actually express that to me. Why would he be marrying his sister? Um, they're not blood sisters. They're from the same tribe, but not. Uh, even earlier, uh, Ragwell calls Tobias his son, which, and he isn't his son. So they use, they use very familiar terms, as in terms that one would use, use within a family, but they're not blood relations um, directly, just, just to have that clear. So do not take my sister for any lustful motive. It's interesting that, that in every aspect of our lives and in every gift that we are given, and I've said this a million times, but I think it's just really, really important to, to, to meditate on over and over again. Uh, whatever the Lord has given us, whatever the Lord has blessed us with, isn't just for us. So any gift that we have been given, uh, so our, our abilities, our intelligence, our bodies, our, our, our minds, our clarity, our music, our, our athletic abilities, whatever it is, all of these things, anything that we have been given has been given to us, not just for us. 
It's given to us to turn it into a gift and give it back. So your singing ability isn't just for, for you in the shower in the morning, but it's to bring joy to other people. Your organisational abilities are to help other people. Your, your, even, yeah, your intelligence and what you can do then as a, as a teacher, doctor, engineer, is to make the world a better place. Everything that you're given is, isn't given to you just for yourself. And even when it comes to, to relationships, and even when it comes to marriage, that's not given to you just for you. And this is, this is a, 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 a par, I think, a problem today if people head into marriage thinking, marriage will complete me. Marriage will, will, will fill this void that I feel in my, in my heart. Uh, I need marriage uh, in order to feel loved. I, I want to be married in order to be, I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need. And then we head into to marriage with this, with this erroneous idea that marriage will, will complete me somehow that this other person will make up for what I lack or, or fulfill my needs, whatever they may be, also physical. But it's just a very, very dangerous way to approach marriage. Because if any gift has been given to us, it's given to us for others. And the essence, the reason for that is because the essence of love is willing the good of the other. So any gift I've been given by God is given to me for the good of others. It's not for me. Even marriage. Marriage isn't given to me for me. Same with priesthood in my case. Priesthood isn't given to me for me that I can have something to do one day a week when I work. Um, It's given to me for the service of others, for the building up of God's kingdom. Marriage is given to those who have that vocation not for them or not just for them. So that's why he can say, I do not take my sister for any lustful motive. It's not just... I think she's really pretty. I think I'd like to marry her. It, that's, that's not what's going on here. I do not take her for any lustful motive. I do it in singleness of heart. He does. He's, he's taking her, yes, because he loves her. Well, he doesn't. I'm not sure how well he knows her yet, but uh, he wants to do God's will. He wants to do God's will in this. So they pray together. They, they, on their first night together, they, they, they pray together. What a, what a beautiful... Just... What, a, what, what, what a, a purification that is of how cheaply the wedding night is often represented or spoken about uh, in contemporary society. You know, how, how physical intimacy has been reduced to something just so carnal and base and even celebrating the sinful aspect, the kind of the, the forbidden aspect of, of, of that kind of, of intimacy. You know, where stag nights and, and hen night hen parties uh, like the kind of I do I need to go into details? <laughs> the kind of plastic body parts that are that are bought for those kind of celebrations and bunny ears and all sorts of kind of, kinds of suggestive kind of things really reducing what is, something, what is something so beautiful, willed by God, sacred and life-giving. Like the, the, the sexual intimacy, it, it's such a gift, it's such a holy and wholesome thing when used as God wishes. Like it's, I mean, it's, it's the unification of, of two people, it's the self-gift of one person and the reception, the receiving of the gift of the other person. And this self-gift, not just I find you attractive and therefore want to sleep with you, but this self-gift then becomes life-giving. It's, 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 this is a participation in God's creative power. Something stunning happens here. And because it is so beautiful and so sacred, the enemy really has had his sights set on this for quite some time, maybe since the sexual revolution in the, in the 60s. But it, and little by little, generation after generation, it has become cheaper and cheaper and more superficial and more superficial until, until you, you mention the word sex now and it's automatically presumed to be something kind of sinful. You almost feel kind of dirty saying it because there must be something sinful about it because it's always associated basically with lust, just lust not self-gift, not participation in, this, in, in God's creative power. 
And this is so far, so far from what, from what God has planned. When you think about it, like, I mean, you know, it's God who invented this. This is how, don't gross you out like, but this is how every single one of us came into being, you know? You know how it works. Like, <laughs> that's how we got here. So, it, it brings some good, I hope. <laughs> but God, God designed this sexual intimacy in this way. So there's nothing wrong with it, per se. On its own, there's nothing wrong with it. But how, how we use it, just like anything, any other gift, my intelligence, I can use this for cancer research or I can use it to develop another atomic bomb. Our, the gift of our sexual faculty is, 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 is just that, a gift. And all gifts given to us by God are given to us for others, for the good of others. So this reading is, it's a reminder of, of God's beautiful plan for sexual intimacy. It's a reminder to us that this is something, this is something wholesome, this something willed by God. And as strange as this may sound like, but like that, that marital embrace, right? That marital embrace. It, it, I, I, I feel strange saying it, but I think it, it's not sinful. It's not bad. It's not wrong. In fact, it's something, because it's something so holy and sacred, if, if, you, if, if, if forgive me for phrasing it this way, like, but it's the kind of thing, if, if, if this were to happen before God, which effectively it does, nothing sinful, bad, shameful has happened. Do you know what I mean? Like the marital embrace, it's such if God was kind of watching, if you will. Nothing sinful or bad has happened. This is something willed by God. This is something beautiful and wholesome. This is something good. It's something life-giving. It's not inherently wrong or evil or bad or dirty or anything. It depends on, on how we use it. And within marriage, what a gift. What a gift. I do not take my sister for any lustful motive. I do it in singleness of heart. Be kind enough to have pity on her, he puts her first, very good, and on me, and bring us to old age together. I want to stay faithful to her until death separates us. And even the, 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 the use of the term sister is so important. Like that we have this season of, of, of courtship, friendship, and then the season of, of me seeing her as, as my equal, as someone I respect and honor. Not as my slave, not as someone inferior to me, but, but someone who I see as my sister. The Lord calls each of us, especially those who are married, but all, all of us, even in our own conversation, the way we, we understand these things and speak about these things, he's calling us to, to a renewal of understanding of sexual intimacy. To take all the, the, kind of the, 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 the sin out of it and the shame out of it and to return it to what it was always designed to be, a self-gift. And that's done then in the context of marriage. Why? Because that's where man and wife have promised to God and to the whole community, I will be with you until death separates us. For better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health. So we can engage in this marital embrace because I will be here tomorrow and the day after and the day after that until I die. You can count on me. You can trust me. I give myself to you and I receive your gift. And I love you. There's nothing shameful or sinful in that. There's nothing lustful at all. So we ask the Lord to renew our understanding of, of intimacy and purify our world, purify our hearts, purify our intentions, that all that we do, we might do in singleness of heart.